Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome back to Cameron Bracey's YouTube channel. I know you all are probably like, whoa, Cameron got a special guest tonight. We didn't know that he was going to have a little man on here. This is my son, my amazing son. He is a child of God. He is already a wise young man. This is Solomon. So everybody say hi to Solomon. And Solomon, say hi to everybody. Say hi, buddy. So this is Solomon. Um, mommy is cooking right now, and Solomon got a little fussy while Mommy was cooking. So um, as you can see, he's pulling his hair. So uh, Daddy decided to bring him on board with us, to bring him in the video tonight, to have him a part of this message. Hey, why not? Uh, he's going to take after his father, right? Uh, so he's going to be with me through the duration of this video. I do want to apologize ahead of time. Um, if you see me kind of bending over um, or if I seem like I'm trying to get him to relax, I am not distracted. I'm only trying to keep him calm, keep him content through the dur duration of this video. So I'm not going to rush the message, but I am going to try to get straight to the points and go right into it tonight um, just to kind of keep him cool and content. OK, so bear with me. Bear with me. See, he's already getting started. So bear, bear with me, everybody. So tonight, the title of this message is, Do You Trust God? Now, I know a lot of you may be saying, Cameron, that's such an easy question. Yeah, of course. Of course I trust God. Why wouldn't I trust God? I don't even doubt him. I know he has great things in store for me. But when you really look on your life, do you truly trust him? Do you truly lean on him? Do you truly rely on him? Um... So tonight, that is what we're going to go into. We're going to really focus on Abraham. We know Abraham as this great man of faith, uh, the father of many nations. But what many people miss in the story of Abraham is the times where he questioned the God, the times where he kind of went, God, is this really going to happen? Because you're saying this, but that doesn't make sense. You're telling me this. You're telling me I'm going to have this. You're telling me that I'm going to be the father of many nations, yet I don't even have a son. So how am I going to be the father of many nations, yet I don't even have a son? And you have to remember, Abraham at this time Abraham at this time was already 80 or 90 years old. So like we do every video, just because Solomon is here, this does not change the fact that, we're, that, that, that we usually pray. So we're going to bow our heads and close our eyes. Heavenly Father, bless my brother and sister on the other side of this camera. Touch them. Bless them. Be with them, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, if they are lacking any trust in you, may you show them that you are Jehovah Jireh. If they're not leaning on you, may you show them that you are the most high God, that you are the highest God, O oh Heavenly Father. May you continue to do amazing things in their life, O oh Lord, and may they not ever doubt you. May they always trust in you. And if they don't know what it's like to truly trust in you, to truly trust you. Heavenly Father, I pray that this word helps them. I pray that this word reveals to them the importance of trusting in God. So in your mighty and holy name, O oh Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. So tonight, like I said, we're going to get straight to it. So um, in Genesis chapter 12, you will see this is when God called Abraham. God called Abraham, told him, hey, you got to leave your family. You got to leave all that behind. Um, I have a call for you. I have land for you. Um, you're going to be the father of many nations. So just imagine one day you're walking around with your family. You're in the field with your dad. You're doing the usual with your brothers and your sisters and your family all together. And and uh, you're doing the usual with your brothers and your sisters. And all together, excuse me there, all together, um, God says, you got to leave all that behind. You got to leave them where they're at. I have something else for you. Um, this was Abraham. So God had called Abraham to this land called Canaan. Um, this was a land that had already been occupied by some other people that you later on will see were called Canaanites and everything. Um, but God called Abraham to this land. But what many people miss in the midst of this story, what many people miss, he fell asleep. You see that? He fell asleep. <laughs> the word of God, right? Just puts him at so much peace. But as you will see in this um, in this story here, when God called Abraham to Canaan, there uh, there came to be a famine there. So when there came to be a famine, Abraham took into his own hands. He thought it would be best. He thought it would be best. He thought it would be best to to head to Egypt. Uh, I apologize again if I seem distracted. Just trying to take care of him also at the same time. Bear with me, bear with me. Um, 
So Abraham headed to Egypt as a result of the famine in the land of Canaan. Now you may be saying, Cameron, how does this, how, how are you going to relate all of this with trusting in God? Because see, what you don't realize here is Abraham, when he went to this land, he had already begun to build altars. He had already built an altar. He had already began to settle a little bit, but because a famine happened, Abraham probably thought, hey, I have a family with me. Hey, I have my wife, Sarah, with me. I have I have these people with me. I can't be in no land where there's famine or Heavenly Father. I got to take them elsewhere. So Abraham thought it would be best for him to go to Egypt. So as a result, Abraham went to Egypt after God had already told him the land of Canaan and many other lands to come, but in this season, the land of Canaan is what I have for you. But I want to tell you all something. When you, you may go somewhere and it may look dry for a season. It may not look like it's prosperous. It may not look like plants are growing. It may not look like there's any fruit growing. It may look dry. You may not see any rivers. But just because you may go through a season of famine or you may go through a famine in your lifetime, it does not mean that God isn't there. It does not mean that God hasn't called you. It's simply, sometimes that will happen and it's not shocking to God, it's shocking to you. See, sometimes we say, hey, I don't know if I can go there. I don't know, is this really where God called me? I mean, I know I heard him, but is this really where he wants me? Um, and the, the famine may be a shock to you, but it is not a shock to God. So do you trust God? This is where I ask, even in the midst of a famine, even in the midst of a drought, do you trust God? So Abraham left 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 Can left the land of Canaan. He went to Egypt, um, and you will see here that when he went to Egypt, uh, I'm gonna read the story for you actually, and we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna break it down for you. So if we start at Genesis chapter 12 verse 10, it says here, at the time a severe famine struck the land of Canaan, forcing Abraham to go down to Egypt where he lived as a foreigner. As he was approaching the border of Egypt, Abram said to his wife Sarah, "Look." You are a very beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Let's kill him, then we can have her. So please tell them that you are my sister, then they will spare my life and treat me well because of their interest in you. And sure enough, when Abram arrived in Egypt, everyone noticed Sarah's beauty. When the palace officials saw her, they sang her praises to Pharaoh, their king, and Sarah was taken into his palace. That Pharaoh gave Abram many gifts because of her. Sheep, goats, cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants, and camels. But the Lord sent terrible plagues upon Pharaoh and his household because of Sarai, Sarah, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh summoned Abram and accused him sharply. What have you done to me? He demanded. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister and allow me to take her as my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and get out of here. Pharaoh ordered some of his men to escort them, and he sent Abram out of the country along with his wife and all his possessions. So as you can see here, Abraham's lack of faith, Abraham's lack of faith when it came to this, when he saw the famine and when he had heard, previously heard God say, hey, go to this land. God never said, go to this land and stay there only if it's in this condition. Go to this land only if it's in this condition. Leave the land when the famine happens or leave the land when these people come. No, God never said that. God just said, hey, go to this land. I have given you this land already. But Abraham left. Because remember, he saw the famine. So as a result, if we do a quick synopsis here, Abraham's lack of faith led him to leave his place of worship. The land of Canaan is where Abraham built the altar to honor God. It was his place of worship, which led him to then lie to Pharaoh. As you said, as you saw here, you just heard me say he premeditated this lie to Pharaoh. Abraham, Sarah was clearly a beautiful woman. And Abraham knew that if he took her to Egypt, the men were going to be jealous or Pharaoh was going to want her. They were going to try to kill him so that they can have her. So he already started to lie. God isn't going to encourage us to lie. God isn't going to encourage you to lie. Anytime you have to lie, just know that is not of God. That goes for me too. Anytime you lie, 
That is not of God. Don't say, well, God wanted me to lie. God wanted me to come up with that. God wanted me to deceive. No, anytime you lie, that's Satan encouraging you to do that. That's the flesh saying, hey, this may not work out the way that you thought it would. Hey, this is going to turn out pretty bad. Forget what God said. What God said is irrelevant right now. You're in a different land. You have a beautiful wife. You need to lie and say that this is your sister. Abraham did not trust that God was going to provide. Abraham did not trust that God was going to protect. And as a result, it led to, it led to Pharaoh rebuking Abraham. And as a result, Abraham then turned around and had to head right back to the land of Canaan. So I want to ask you a question that I wrote down here. Have you ever lied because you thought there would be no good? You thought there would be no good that would come out of telling the truth. Ponder on that a little bit. We sometimes sit here and think Satan has deceived us into thinking that if we tell the truth, there's going to be harm in that. If we tell the truth, we're going to be rebuked because of that. If we tell the truth, Things aren't going to work out the way God said. But guys, just think about this. If we tell the truth, God is in the midst of the truth. Jesus is the truth. Remember, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, why lie? Why make up a fib? Who is it harming? Why are you lying in the first place? I'm going to answer that question for you. It's because you don't trust God. And you may say, well, Cameron, I wanted to take this vacation from work. But did you think that God wouldn't allow you to still take that vacation if you would have been truthful with your manager? Well, Cameron, I had to lie. This girl uh, who I was really into, who I, who I just knew God called to be my wife, she wouldn't, have, she wouldn't accept me if she knew the things that I did before. But if God called her to be your wife, do you think that anything from your past is going to sway her from giving you a chance is going to sway her from marrying you someday yeah at the beginning she may go mm, i don't know mm, we'll have to see but if god has called her to be your wife if he revealed that to you you don't have to lie don't start your relationship in a lie don't start your new job in a lie don't 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 start don't don't start any professional relationship any spiritual relationship don't even make your relationship with god a lie be truthful there is only you may say cameron what good comes out of always telling the truth and it's always a blessing there's always good when it comes out when when it comes to telling the truth so as you can see here we fast forward i want to take you to genesis chapter 13 and we're going to read verses 5 through 9 and basically here you all will see when after i read these scriptures how abraham it went from not so much trusting god because of what he saw in the land but now abraham trusted god when it came to the land god had given him so i'm gonna read it here for you so lot who was traveling with abram had also become very wealthy with flocks of sheep and goats herds of cattle and many tents but the land could not support both Abram and Lot with all their flocks and herds living so close together. So disputes broke out between the herdsmen of Abram and Lot. And at that time, Canaanite, Canaanites and Perizzites were also living in the land. Finally, Abram said to Lot, Let's not allow this conflict to come between us or our herdsmen. After all, we are close relatives. Now remember, God had told Abraham at the beginning, do not bring anyone. Leave them behind. The whole countryside is open to you. Take your choice of any section of the land you want, and we will separate. If you want the land to the left, then I'll take the land on the right. If you prefer the land on the right, then I'll go to the left. Cameron, how is this scripture relevant to trusting God? Because as you can see here, Abraham knew God had already given him this land. God had already given him this land, yet he still said, Lot, if you want this side, take it. If you want that side, take it. Do you trust that God will provide for you? Do you trust that God is Jehovah Jireh? Do you trust God? Because see, sometimes we're stingy. Sometimes we say, I can't give that. God may be calling you in this Passover season, in this season, a Passover. 
He may be calling you to give $100. He may be causing you to give $500. He may be causing you to give food to those who are hungry. He may be call calling you to, to take some clothes out of your closet and give to those who are poor, to give to those who don't have any clothes. But I want to ask you, do you trust God? You may be coming up with every excuse. Oh, Lord, I have to pay the mortgage. Oh, God, I got to pay the water bill. I got to pay the, the gas bill. I got to pay the cell phone bill. God, I, I can't afford to give 500 this season. I can't afford to give 1,000 this season. Some of you may be in a position where you can give 10,000. God, I can't afford that. I got to take care of this. I got to take care of that. But do you trust God? Because God is not calling you. God is not asking you to do those things to harm you. But it is very well to prosper you. So I just want to ask you. Do you trust him? Because as you can see here. Abraham and Lot, they began to quarrel. Abraham told Lot, if you want the left, I'll take the right and vice versa. This all reflected the trust that Abraham began to have in the Lord. Because God already told Abraham that the land is his. So you may be someone watching this video tonight. And you may be saying, Cameron, God is calling me to do this. God is calling me to get that. But I don't know if I want to because he told me this is mine. He told me that what, what this is, he has this for me. So why would he ask me to give this away? Why would he ask me to sell this? Why would he ask me to give away some of these possessions? If he has already told me that this is mine because it doesn't matter what you give away. First of all, God owns everything. Second of all, if you truly trust him, you're gonna give knowing that you're gonna, he's gonna give you back more than double. More than double, he will give you back. More than double. I want to take you all to Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. And this is where the Lord made a covenant. He made a promise to Abraham about him being the father of many nations. And you will see here, sometime later, as it says, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision and said to him, Do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you. And your reward will be great. But Abram replied, O sovereign Lord, what good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? Since you've given me no children, Eliza of Damascus, a servant in my household, will inherit all my wealth. You have given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the Lord said to him, No, your servant would not be your heir, but for you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. Then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, Look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. See, we read that scripture. It's so much easier to read, but let's not take it out of context. Remember at the beginning of this video, I told you that Abraham was already at this time well over 80 years old. He was at least, at the minimum, 80. Abram was already 80. And God is saying you're going to have as many descendants as the stars. God is saying, all of this I will have, you're going to have an heir. But Abram is like, God, I'm an old man. How is all this going to happen if I don't? have a son but I want to remind you all of something the importance of trusting God see back in Genesis chapter 12 verse 2 God told Abraham I will make you a great nation realize we're in Genesis chapter 15 here in Genesis chapter 13 verse, verse 15 God said I'm giving you all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants God had already promised Abraham not once but twice and now this third time. And Abraham is still going, how, Lord? How? You're saying I'm going to have as many descendants here. I'm going to have as many descendants there. 
But God, how if I, if I don't even have a son? I'm 80 years old, oh Lord. How? How, God? But see, I want to remind everybody today that even when something doesn't make sense, even when things don't appear promising, even after God already made the promise, I want to remind everybody today that God's promises never come short. God's promises never fail. God cannot break a promise. So we're going to do one last point here. I don't want to take you all to James chapter 2, verse 19. James chapter 2, verse 19. Excuse me as I get there with you all. And here James was talking about faith without good deeds is dead. So James here said, you have faith for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this and they tremble in terror. Believing it enough. James said it best. Faith without good deeds is faith. Is your faith is dead. I mean, faith without good deeds is dead. Is your faith dead or is your faith alive? Dead faith is saying, I believe in God. But I'm not going to give to this person. I'm not going to bless that person. I'm not going to give that amount. I'm not going to buy their lunch. I'm not going to pay for their dinner. I'm not going to go here. I'm not going to go there. But I do believe in God. Because God blessed me. God made me prosperous. God told me all of this is mine. So if he told me all of this is mine, why would I give this away? Why would I do that? That makes no sense. Your faith is dead. That's why. But faith that is alive, faith that is that is flowing like a river, faith that is that is that is breathing the air in and out that faith says i may not have enough but i'm going to be obedient that faith says i may not understand exactly why god wants me to do this but i'm going to be obedient so guys i'm going to do a part two to this video <laughs> as you can see i'm a little occupied here right now but i wanted to get this message out to you all just to kind of give you a uh little snapshot as to what we're going to go into next time i'm most likely going to record this video and we'll post it for you all tomorrow but i just want to leave you with the question do you trust god do you trust god do you trust him some of you watching this video today probably was like cameron you're crazy why would you bring your five month soon to be six month old son on there with you he's going to be crying he's going to distract you you're not going to be able to give such a powerful word and now look at him <laughs> sound asleep do you trust god ask yourself i'm not asking do you believe in god i believe in god but i also trust him do you trust god what is it that he's calling you to do? What is it that he's asking you to do? What is it that he's probably already told you to do? But you haven't done it yet because you can't make sense of it. Do you trust God? I love you. And this is only part one of two parts for this powerful sermon. So I will get this message out to you all. I love you all. God bless you. May you have a favorite, filled evening. God bless you.